Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Gospel Explosion this evening. <clears throat> this is Elder Carl White sitting in again for Pastor Jack P. Leland. Um, so let us get started. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we just give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory for this evening, oh God. And help us, God, to receive your word, God. Help us to settle in to your word, Lord, that all things will be done in your precious name. So now, oh God, we just come forward to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. So, tonight, so, tonight, I want to talk with you for a few moments. I want to talk with you for a few moments from Colossians chapter 3. Verses 12 through 17. Verses 12 through 17. And it reads as such. Put on therefore as such as the elect of God. Put on therefore. Holy and beloved. Bowels of mercies. Kindness humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfect. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. That word is already blessed. And this evening, I want to talk to you for a few moments uh, on the subject of developing a attitude of gratitude. Developing a attitude of gratitude. Now, last week, we talked about the magnitude of gratitude. Just how much gratitude we had ourselves uh, for what God has done for us in our lives and and what that entails and, and being grateful for each and everything that the Lord God has done in our life. And so this week, uh, 
now it's time to fill in the other piece of that um, teaching about gratitude. Because gratitude is, is something that a lot of times we look over very lightly. It's, it's something that we handle with a minimum of concern. It, it, it's something that we often as Christians forget to do. And it's something that we speak regularly out of our mind, out of our mouths, but sometimes our actions do not show that we have a lot of gratitude to God for the great things he has done in our lives. So this week, dealing with these scriptures in the book of Colossians, we find in looking at them closely that we have to develop an attitude of gratitude. I know most of us think we already have it and we're thankful uh, to God for everything. I know that uh, we use it regularly in church on a couple days a week and when we run into other Christians uh, but it's an everyday attitude to have. It's a every moment attitude to have. Because if we really take a close look at how great and how good and how loving and how kind that God has been to us, we should be overwhelmed with gratitude. But sometimes, why is that not so? Why is that not the case? Because a lot of times in everything we do, we handle it with and as a routine occurrence. Is it any time that you may think that you yourselves may take God for granted? Is there? Is there any time that you think we don't really acknowledge God like we should? God does not expect that much from us as we look at things except to worship him, have fellowship with him, be in relationship with him, obey him, and be thankful for what he has done. And that's the way in the teachings of Jesus through his earthly ministries and throughout the Old Testament, it speaks of thanksgiving and thankfulness and just saying thanks to God and, and being grateful which are all synonyms and types of word that could be used interchangeably with gratitude. But as we look into our Christian lives today, <clears throat> let us focus in and zero in on developing a attitude of gratitude. Now, if we go to the scriptures, and again, starting in verse 12. And I'll read it for you again. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. It, it's telling us here to put on as the elect of God, God's chosen, 
God's people. Put on, put on us, put on our lives, put on our personalities, put on our behavior. Okay. Loved and holy. Bowels of mercies. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness and long suffering. To attach these things to us. Now, I have to stop here for a minute and tell you that developing an attitude for gratitude or developing an attitude for almost anything else involves a mindset. We have to be thinking about being grateful. It has to be in the forefront of our mind because normally when people do kind things for us or they give you gifts or they, they, they look out for you or maybe they help you with, with things, we have the social courtesy of saying thank you to that person. But sometimes we get to the habit of People will do stuff for us and we don't even bother to say thank you. It's like we expect it. And that's their duty to do good things and good stuff for us. But see, our relationship with God through the finished works of Jesus Christ is a totally different subject. It's a totally different mindset. Because the Bible shows us that let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. And God who created us and, and God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit way back in Genesis when they created us and we were set upon this earth, they made Mankind in their image and likeness. So everything that is within God was created and put into us. And if we bring that real quick, fast forward to the present time from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that we're no longer under the law, but under grace. And this is after Jesus Christ came and bled and died and took on our sins to free us from the penalty of sin. He shed his blood so that we might be reconciled back to God through him. Amen. That he became and sent a comforter to be with us and in us. Right? Right? So we know that the Holy Spirit resides in us and is with us. God the Father and Jesus the Son, they abide and abode with us and in us. And see, it's not them that have gone astray. It's us that have gone astray in our lives and need to come back to God and ask for forgiveness and be reconciled back to him. So after that happens, how do we act? How do we act towards God is the point. How do we act towards one another is the point. Are we treating one another with the love and the, the, the kindness and as it says, Put on, therefore, as the elective people of God, we're holy and beloved by God. Bowels of mercies, which means our bowels uh, is considered anatomically what fills us up inside. Our hollow organs that hold a lot 
of the intricate biological needs of our body are held within bowels of mercy. So we should be full of mercies. Kindness, full of kindness. Then it states humbleness of mind, which really kind of stuck out because we become used to hearing the word humble and humility passed around here and there, especially in the church culture, but it says humbleness of mind. See, sometimes even after we get saved and have been saved for years, days, or whatever, we lose our humbleness of mind. And usually that's one of the starting places that we have to get to to develop an attitude, especially an attitude of gratitude to God. Like I just said, it's a, it's a mindset. We have to develop a, a mindset. We have to associate ourselves with the mindset of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Just like it says, put these things on. Meekness, long-suffering. We have to put these things on so that they can be associated with us as a child of God. We have to acknowledge, first of all, that we may lack some of these things. And as we develop our personal and intimate relationship with God through Jesus Christ, even closer than we think we have now, we will discover that we still need to acknowledge uh, putting on these things as the elect of God although we're holy and beloved, that we have to put on these bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Because that has a lot to do with how we deal with one another. And see, at this point in the Christian life, that's how we're expected to act. We're expected to act with one another as God and Jesus and directed by his Holy Spirit has acted with us. Now in verse 13, it, it talks about forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. For forbearing, holding one another up, being patient with one another, forgiving one another, for even the slightest to the greatest of offense. And, and see, it's again still changing our mindset because sometimes some of us we get highly offended by the tiniest of things that we perceive as an infraction against us. We could hold that against one another in a grudge or a resentment for years. And what we're being told by the Apostle Paul in these scriptures if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Just like Christ forgave us, 
for all the petty things that we've done, all the disobedience, all the misbehaving, all the mistreatment that we extend towards one another. You see, what it comes down to a lot is changing our attitude not only with God, but when with other people. Because because Jesus said that how you treat the least of these is how you've treated me. Just to paraphrase right quick, what you have done to the least is what you have done to him. So, when we get to the point that we have a quarrelsome mindset, we have a, a, a contentious mindset, we have a mindset that's always ready to do battle, to say unkind words, to try to have our own way. And if things aren't our own way, then they're not right. All those little things that we do in the church and among the Christian family, we now are going to develop a mindset to acknowledge those things, ask God for forgiveness, have him remove them for us from us, and then replace those things with the mindset of Christ Jesus and put on his characteristics, put on his love, put on his caring, put on his compassion, put on his concern about every person in the world. Because as it says in John 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and, and I finally begun to understand why that word should is in there. Because Jesus knew his people. He knew the struggles that we would have ourselves in the flesh. He knew the struggles and the problems we would have with one another in the flesh. But he also knew that through him and what he had done and what he had taught and what's recorded in the Bible is the solution for changing the mindset that we have towards one another. In verse 14, it states, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Put on charity or love, which is the bond of perfectness. And, and it's interesting that it says, and above all these things that were just talked about or listed in the previous two verses, above all these things, put on charity, put on love. Now, I'm not going to take up time because there's a chapter on love that we can read that's very familiar to us. So I encourage you in your free time to read that chapter about love or charity again. But we want to focus right now on above all these other things, put on charity, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness for us in Christ, as we seek to gain 
a more intimate relationship with God our Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. Put on. It keeps saying, put on. Put on, therefore. Put on. But when you put on something, you often have to remove something because if you keep putting stuff on, you could be overclothed for your climate. And, and naturally, we want to be comfortable in walking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus is something we shouldn't be bundled up because, see, we, we can't put on the good stuff over the not so good stuff. We can't put over the good stuff over the bad stuff. Because if we still carry the bad stuff or the not so good stuff around with us, sooner or later, it's going to come out. And the more it's allowed to come out, or the, or let me put it this way, the more it's allowed to exist without removal, the more frequently it will occur. And see, what this is, is talking about change, brothers and sisters. It's talking about change. When we come to Christ, there is a change that comes over us. As we continue to walk with Christ, we should be constantly changing, evolving, and manifesting the personality, and, and the love of Christ in us each and every day. This is part of the process, and this is an ongoing process until we reach glory. So in other words, there's no way that we can be in relationship with Jesus Christ for so long that this is not necessary. It's necessary for us to look out and, and keep check of our mindsets and our attitudes because they will frequently get in the way, become a stumbling block. Uh, they will be offensive to us and against us. And on those things build all kind of other um, certainly Christian deceiving bad getting along can't get along church wrecking, church destroying uh, running folks away from God action this is true. But the most exciting and best thing that we could do is allow God to change us. Stop fighting the change, thinking that we've been a certain way our whole life, or I'm setting my ways. This is the way I've always done it. This is what I know. You know, everything in Christ daily is brand new. It's another day, it's another opportunity, it's another chance to be better than we have been the day before. Those are the kind of opportunities that Jesus Christ gives us. Those are the type of things that I have discovered that those little careful, loving, kind things, merciful and graceful things that Jesus Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit have, have done for me has, over time and through experience, began to etch away at my mindset, etch away at some of my own attitudinal behavior to help me discover the magnitude of my gratitude for God and to develop an attitude of gratitude.
towards the Lord God of Israel. And, and, and I keep coming back to verse 14, and it says, above all these things, put on charity, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness or completeness in Christ Jesus. When we put on love, we are bound even more tightly to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was already bound to us. God was bound to us from the beginning, from creation. We as God's children have to learn the more we walk with daddy, the more we become like daddy. So the more love that God gives us, the more love we begin to return back to him and then more love we have for one another. In verse 15, where it states, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Brothers and sisters, I would say the quest of a lot of people, believers, the lost, unbelievers, you name it, is to have peace in their lives. No struggle, no condemnation, no depression, or things of that sort. But for a Christian, striving and seeking the peace of God, letting the peace of God rule in our lives. In other words, letting the peace of God take over. Letting the peace of God activate so effectively in our lives, letting the peace of God just handle everything for us in our hearts. And see, we're called in one body because Christ says there is, there's is one Lord, one God, one church, which Christ is the head. Christ is the body. We are the body of the church of Jesus Christ. This is what we're called to, to have the peace of God in our hearts. That's the whole thing about putting on charity and the love of God and the grace of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, is to get to that place where we have peace in our hearts with God, allowing him to rule and reign in our lives and settle in in our hearts so that God is in control and not us. It's not easy, brothers and sisters, because we strive to be like Christ. We strive to put on everything that Jesus had about him. We struggle with that because we constantly want to do things our own way. And we come to a place that we just as well assign ourselves to understand that our way is not the way that matters. Our way is not the way that God operates to take care of us, to care for us, to love us, to lead us, to guide us, to provide for us, to do anything for us. It's not because of our way. God's way is the only way. See, we have to get to the point, and as it says in, in the next clause, and be ye thankful. Be ye thankful. 
Again, a, a, a similar word, another word for grateful, another word for gratitude. Be ye thankful. Be ye of the mindset and the attitude of being thankful to God for each and every perfect and great work that he has done in your life or the lives of those that you love. Be ye thankful. Be ye thankful for what God has done in the lives of other people. Be ye thankful for what God is doing in the lives of our brothers and sisters in Christ. See, developing ourselves leads us, we have to take on, we have to address, we have to acknowledge, we, we have to associate within ourselves that we have many, many different mindsets. A lot of people that won't admit it, they have a mindset in church, and they have a different mindset out of church. They have a mindset in front of their family. They got another mindset when they're away from their families. They got a mindset when they're with their friends and people they're comfortable with. And when they're around people that they don't know that well. And we usually guard our mindsets pretty strenuously. But what happens along the way is that when we guard and protect the negative mindsets, the negative attitudes that we hold on to for dear life, that God is trying to help us and lead us and guide us to allow the power of the Holy Ghost and his son Jesus Christ to help us get rid of, we hold on to them for dear life. That we're going to keep those and we're going to use the mindsets of God or the attitudes or, or anything of Jesus Christ when it suits our need. Even establishing a better life is tied into changing our mindset. Leading a more Christian journey involves changing our mindsets, changing our attitudes, changing how we look at things, changing how we perceive things. Because, see, there's something that happens as we get closer to God and walk closer with Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through all of life's twists and turns, the good times, the bad times. When we lean and depend on God for all things, we begin to see things less as we see it and more as God sees it. It's plain and simple. And it'll happen when we yield ourselves, when we humble ourselves to God and let his effective power make changes within us. And the more that happens, the more thankful we become. It goes further than, Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning in my right mind. It it goes further than, Lord, I thank you for food on the table and clothes on my back, a car to drive, a roof over my head. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond, Lord, I thank you for having breath in my body. See, when we connect with Christ on that level, when we connect with God on that level, it's more than just about 
our life. It's more than that. It's about how we can let the light of God shine so through us that it will draw others to him through the finished works of Jesus Christ and the difference that they see in us based on the changes of our attitudes and our mindsets and our gratefulness and our thankfulness, our gratitude. And then that leads us back to the magnitude of our gratitude. Because see, it's in constant flux and development. It, it just doesn't stay in one dynamic all the time. It grows and it strengthens. Just like us in, in the Christian living, it matures. It gains strength. It gains more power. The more Jesus we have, the more power we have. The more God we have, the more dominion and authority that we have over the things that bother us in our lives, which are mostly the things that our mind tells us that are wrong or our mind leads us to make certain decisions or our mind convinces us to have certain attitudes and do and behave in ways that we know that we should not. But it's all about wrapping ourselves up in Jesus Christ. Allowing the Holy Spirit to just infuse us with, with his totalness and resting in the love of God. Now, verse 16 says, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly and in all wisdom, in all wisdom, all wisdom, all experiences, all knowledge, all things in the mind. The word of Christ dwelling in us, richly, in all of these things. So our mindset and our attitudes will change. That development of an attitude of, of gratitude for God will grow and strengthen in leaps and bounds. And the way that we deal with one another, teaching and administering one another in psalms and hymns, Psalms and hymns are, are, they're both songs, but they have a different tone to them. While, while psalms can be uplifting and hymns are about praising and worshiping God and spiritual songs that we have that are placed in our heart by the Holy Spirit that we sing to other, one another or with each other because of the grace that is in our hearts because of the Lord, our God. Because he's been so good to us. Because he's been that great to us. That he's been that loving to us. He's been that merciful to us. That he's been that just awesome in our lives. See, sometimes it's just so hard for us to have these kind of discussions or even articulate because it's easier to take the less popular path. It's easier to go the path that will cause us the least amount of struggle within our own selves. But in verse 17, it, it gives us a, a wonderful thing that we can do, a wonderful thing that we can place in action, a wonderful thing that we can assimilate uh, in our lives that God gives us the perfect mindset, the perfect attitude, 
of gratitude to exhibit not only to God, but to everyone else. And verse 17 reads, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Whatsoever ye do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. You know, brothers and sisters, that, that just about wraps it up. That just about says it all. That just about keeps us and implores us to do everything possible. That is just awesome. That whatever we do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. That we do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and to the Father by him. So brothers and sisters, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God lead you to work on uh, changing the mindset that you may have, or I may have, or anybody may have, by loving them through it as God loves us through it so that we can develop an attitude of gratitude to God based on our love for God and who he is to us and not just what he can do or has done for us. Now let us pray. Again, eternal God, our Father, we just give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for your word this evening. We thank you for everybody that is on this broadcast, oh God. We thank you for your wonderful works and your marvelous ways. And we continue to acknowledge you in our life and give you thanks and gratitude for all things that you have done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, thank you for being with us this evening. Uh, be sure to join us on Sunday at 9.30 for our worship experience. 9.30, uh, we'll be live in, on Facebook and we're also in person in church. We're still requiring mass, but we will be glad to see you and have you come and worship with us. And if you would like to share this broadcast, uh, you can share it with anybody uh, from Facebook, uh, our website, Innovation, baptistchurch.org. Uh, if you need any kind of assistance, you can reach our church at area code 8505750818 and someone will be in touch to see whatever help that we could render. So again, thank you for being here this evening and we hope to see you on Sunday. Amen. Be blessed.